You know what worked really well from the years 1950 to 1954? Falsely labeling people as communists so that they would lose their job. In fact, that's something called McCarthyism. And that's literally what it says. It says, a vociferous campaign against alleged communists in the U.S. government and other institutions carried out under Senator Joseph McCarthy in the period of 1950 to 1954. Many of the accused were blacklisted or lost their job, although most did not, in fact, belong to the Communist Party. And they say the definition is simply a campaign or practice that endorses the use of unfair allegations and investigations. We are in that era, and it's wonderful. Isn't it amazing that we, we are in a position now where random people will place a phone call, accuse you of being a Nazi, and then try to get your event shut down? Well, yesterday we put on an event, and that's what they tried doing. In fact, some people even showed up, one person, trying to do literally that. It's so weird. It's so weird how you have white progressive activists saying extremely racist things, you can see it on the screen, and then accusing everybody else of being racists. What's happening right now in politics, as far as I, you know, I, I think there's like an overarching picture is that the left is basically just become authoritarian. No, that's it. I mean, look, we can talk about ideology, regressive, whatever. Take a look at this story. Will and Grace star Deborah Messing is slammed for celebrating church sign describing black Trump voters as mentally ill after co-star Eric McCormick called for the president's Hollywood supporters to be blacklisted. I believe Deborah Messing also made that uh, um, insinuation that we should find out who these people are so we don't work with them. They're appealing straight to some kind of ideological authority. Some, it's like a purity system. But here's the thing. We can talk about how it's an ideology, but it's kind of not, right? Because, I mean, this woman, Deborah Messing, makes a very offensive statement and gets, people get mad, mad at her for it. The rules seemingly don't make sense. It is a nebulous faction of chaotic authoritarians. Bend the knee to the mass, whatever it is. Just submit. Be it the FBI when they're going up against, you know, Trump and his administration and his administration. Be it the, you know, massive uh, college institutions who are scam, which are, in my opinion, scams, ripping off young people. All of these things that we can point to that are bad. Like, come on, man. How long ago was it that all the left wing activists were like, hey, the FBI is violating the Constitution? But now we're here. What are the left is becoming? They have no problem making racist statements. They have no problem being rich, wealthy white people pointing the finger at poor brown people and calling them white supremacists. And they have absolutely no problem falsely labeling people with things that don't actually, you can't like describing people in ways which we would uh, call it McCarthyism, right? I'll just sim simplify that. Let's read this story and uh, I will continue whinging, or is that the right word? Complaining about the the wealthy establishment types who are using authoritarian tactics to win. But win what? I guess at the end of the day, it's just bend to the authority, whatever it may be. The Daily Mail says, actress Deborah Messing appears to have supported a sign at an Alabama church branding black Donald Trump supporters as mentally ill. The Will and Grace star 51 tweeted, thank you, Alabama, on Saturday in response to a story about a Baptist church in Birmingham that displayed a sign reading a black, Trump, a black vote for Trump as mental illness. The other side of the controversial sign put on display outside the New Era Baptist contains the message, a white vote for Trump is pure racism. Michael Jordan, really? The, that's his name. The pastor of the local church told WZDX that he erected the sign in a bid to encourage people to choose a name other than Trump on their ballots next year. Now, when I saw this, my question was, can a church legally do this? Because I know they're not allowed to play politics, the separation of church and state, and they're also tax exempt. I don't know. Far be it from me. I don't know. I'm not a lawyer. So she said thank you to it. Now, here's the thing. A lot of people are probably going to highlight the, the pure racism one, but you can't dismiss that it's calling black voter, uh, black Trump supporters mentally ill. That's pretty racist, right? So that's why I say it's not really about ideology. If they really cared about social justice, they wouldn't refer to people like Dave Chappelle. That, that, I'm, I'm, I'm probably going to do a bigger video on Dave Chappelle coming up next, but they're slamming him. Why? because he said things they don't like. Yeah, their, their anti-racism only goes so far as do you support the authority or not? It's really funny about the, the event that we put on the other day because we let people speak their minds. I don't, you know, I don't, I, I don't care about the color of your skin. I care about the content of your character. That's true anti-racism. These people fly that flag like Antifa, right? And they say, if you oppose us, 
because of our name, therefore you must support the other, you know, faction. So we put on an event called Ending Racism, then by their logic for protesting us, they're racists, right? Well, I mean, literally they are, but let's keep reading. Daxton Kirk, a local Trump supporter, claimed that people should not be able to come into a building and feel like you are hated or diversified just because you came here to worship the Lord. I don't know what he means by diversified. Divided? Kirk told the local station that he had contacted the town city hall to see if officials can do anything about the sign. Meanwhile, some Twitter users took issue with messing over her comment, with one saying, sorry, Deborah, my worldview doesn't break down into black versus white. It breaks down into those who support ripping babies apart from their mother's womb and those who don't. Well, it's kind of black and white. <laughs> I vote to protect babies of all colors, period. Oh, I see what they're saying, not race, but it definitely sounds like they're not supporting nuance. Another named Caring Canuck claimed, thanking someone for hatred and division. Wow. Yep. Another user named Mr. Javahead claimed, I had no idea Hollywood still harbored this level of prejudice against people of color. Disgusting. Well, of course, they're rich people. You know, the way I see it, you have these people who have effectively deflected the actual criticism, the wealthy. How is it that Tucker Carlson, right? He did a segment where he was like, it's class, class is the issue. And I'm like, Tucker? Tucker Carlson talking about class divides? Wow. Well, I guess everybody has shifted to the left a little bit, even the people on the right. But the left is adopting an authoritarian worldview, which isn't necessarily left or right. They just want you to bend to the mob, regardless of what the mob believes. Well, that's insane. It's insane and dangerous. But yeah, you know what? It's the, it's the new era of, era of McCarthyism. And I think when you see, I think she did too, but her and the other guy, Eric McCormick, saying we're not going to work with people who are Trump supporters, they start pointing the finger and accusing people of being the other. Same thing they were doing back then, right? They say the Hollywood Reporter carried a story about tickets for September 17th fundraiser being sold for as much as $100,000 per couple as part of Trump's re-election campaign. Wow, that is insane. The fundraiser is being hosted by Republican National Committee Chairwoman Ronna McDaniel, RNC co-chairman Tommy Hicks Jr., campaign manager Brad Parscale, and Trump, Trump Victory Finance Chairman Todd Ricketts. So is that what they're... Okay, so Messing's tweet came a day after she expressed anger about a fundraiser being held for Donald Trump in Beverly Hills and claimed that a list of attendees should be made public. So that's what happened. So I think Eric McCormick, was he specifically talking about... What did they say about him? The other guy from Will & Grace apparently was talking about people working on something. Oh, no, no, no. Okay. Eric McCormick and Deborah Messing were talking about a fundraiser. Well, I will stress, I am no fan of $100,000, you know, ticket fundraisers. Um, I think that's, you know, I mean, look, if you're rich, you can do what you want, I guess. But I still don't like that idea. I think, I think class issues are serious. I think class is the real problem we face in this country. And it, it doesn't matter what the color of your skin is. You can be poor. You can be rich. Dave Chappelle made that point. I was just rewatching uh, the monologue he did in 2016 after Trump got elected. And he said he decided to become a rich black man and he saw all these changes were happening. And yeah, there are class issues, right? The report stated that tickets start at $1,000 and cost up to $100,000 per couple for a VIP reception. But Deborah Messing and her Will and Grace co-star Eric McCormick took issue with the fundraiser. Please print a list of all attendees, please. Okay, is that what, really what they said? The public has a right to know. Messing tweeted early Saturday. She included a link to the Hollywood Reporter story. Hey, at THR, McCormick also tweeted, kindly report on everyone attending this event so the rest of us can be clear about who we don't want to work with. You don't want to work with someone because of something they do in their personal life? It's so, so weird. I thought the idea was, you know, live and let live, that you, what you do in the privacy of your own home and what you do, you know, it, that's you. But now it's not. Now it's, an authoritarian faction emerging, demanding that you bend the knee to their mob. Otherwise, they will try to destroy you. But I will say this. Look, if, if Hollywood wasn't so such a monoculture of fringe ideology, this probably would backfire on them in many ways, and it still might. Imagine if, you know, a marketing company decides to do a commercial and they say, hey, you know, we'd like to have you guys. And they bring in two people and they go, hey, wait, that guy's a Trump supporter. Well, you can leave then, right? I'm saying it's possible there might be some companies that might say, listen, if you don't want to work with them, you can go. We're not going to get rid of someone because you're complaining. You have a right to leave. Unfortunately, it doesn't really work that way. So it, it may be the instance, but you know, I guess the problem is in many circumstances, these companies just bend the knee and say, oh, we don't want any trouble. Great. We'll get rid of whoever you say. 
And now you have these, you have companies literally dedicated to watching, like I'm sure there's someone watching all of my videos just waiting and waiting, waiting to capture some snippet out of context and then plaster all over the internet. That's what they do. They do, look, they do it more so to the more staunch conservative types. But how do we function in a society when that's the goal? Cancel culture is a sickness that needs to be stopped. Okay, we need to stop these people. We can't allow these fringe weirdos to create these weird authoritarian, it's so creepy. It's such a Stepford Wives kind of like, you know, robotic psych psychopathy. Like, it's kind of crazy. But you know what really scares me is that it seems like a liberal society is actually being threatened right now. You know, people have often said that, you know, the left always wins over time. Well, it's liberty that always wins. But what they're advocating now is authority. I hope liberty wins in the end. I think it might, especially with people like Dave Chappelle. That, that, that special, wow, it really, you know, pushed the line back. But it's hard to know for sure. You know, they're calling for essentially new era McCarthyism. So here's what I'm going to do. Did you know that the Dave Chappelle special has a zero on Rotten Tomatoes? I'm, I think that's what I'm going to do. We'll see what happens. But in the next segment, I think I'm going to go into a bigger in-depth thing about cancel culture, politics, Dave Chappelle, and, and read over some of these reviews. It's Labor Day weekend. So, you know, uh, it's right. Labor Day. Yeah. Everybody's, is it? Yeah. I don't know. Whatever. Everybody's chilling. I'm going to be chilling. We'll take it easy. We'll talk cancel culture. Stick around. Next segment will be at 4 p.m. YouTube.com slash Timcast. And I will see you all there. It is a different channel.